Liz Larson. And I'm Bill McKenna. And together, we created the Cogno Movement System. And we'd like to welcome you to the New Life Perspectives radio show. Where we're going to be sharing with you tools, tips, and ideas that are going to change your life. Hello, hello in UK Health Radio Land. I'm Liz Larson, and I'm here with my friend, Bill McKenna. Hey, Bill McKenna. And we're the hosts of the New Life Perspectives radio show, and we just happen to be the duo that created the amazing Cogno Movement system. So Bill and I, off camera, were having a very spirited conversation, not at all a debate, but a really interesting conversation. And I'm going to let Bill set this up for you. Now, I have a sense that you guys are going to be talking back to us while we're talking about this too. So if this topic triggers you positively or negatively, or you just want to punch us in the face, please reach out to us, info at cognomovement.com. We really want to hear your thoughts about this concept. So we'll start with, you know, a discovery that Bill had. Bill does a daily class. It's a breath work and meditation and concepts. He's been doing it now for the better part of almost two and a half years. And the people who join him in that class, it's called the um, Super Immunity Gym, have changed their lives in, in a huge way. So let, let's where we set it up. And this is where the story begins. So share okay. with us, Bill, about this discovery. Okay. Wow. Well, I have to back way, way up to, you know, give you a kind of a, an understanding. Um, the first part of this, I just wanted to, you know, say that um, this does not work for everybody, but it does work for most people. And the meditation that I had come up with I call it the original feeling meditation. And in this meditation, uh, I have the person to simply walk back through their life, back through their birth, back through the womb, imagining they're in the womb, back through the flash of light. And this flash of light, interestingly enough, um, at the point of conception, there is a flash of light. The scientists have actually documented this now. So you come in through a flash of light. And then we basically in the meditation go before the flash of light. Now, we know from near-death experience. Uh, there's the International Association for Near-Death Studies. There's thousands of books on this subject. If you're listening to this, you may have heard about near-death experience and people going, you know, after, uh, you know, death into the light and this feeling of love and acceptance and bliss. Well, what we do in this meditation is we go in the opposite direction. We go before you were ever born. One of the things about going before you were ever born, kind of in between life, in between lives, is that you encounter your parents. And because there is no time in this dimension before you were ever born, your parents are there and they haven't been born and you haven't been born. It was basically all of you, parents, grandparents, uh, sisters, brothers, friends, all of you, all of you are there. And the encounter you make with them, first your mother, then your father, then the siblings, the encounter is filled with this love. It's amazing. Like, oh my God, I never knew that they loved me that much and that they felt that way. It's a, it's an amazing, blissful experience that um, people often will find themselves crying in bliss during this. So 
This original feeling, the purpose of it is to gain the knowledge that, and that through experience that all of these people in my life that I thought kind of sucked, they actually loved me a lot before I ever got here. And then we come back through and into this moment. But one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is the realization of everybody loved me and bringing that back into this physical dimension here, back through the light, back to the womb, back through your life into now and, and having that experience. This sets up an amazing uh, cascade of changes in your life. Once you experience in your reality that these people really love you and you know this, then there's all of these other people that also loved you. When we die, this, uh, because we, we know from the thousands of books of near-death experience, when we die, people talk about everything and everyone loves the heck out of me. They're out often in space, and it's like every single star loves them. They are surrounded by love and joy for them, which is as most, most of them say, it is beyond words, that words fail it. There are no words for it. So this experience after we die is called a fifth dimensional experience. Now, these dimensions, there are the, in our experience here on earth, most people are going to fit into a third, the fourth or fifth dimension. The third dimension is governed by conditional love. There's laws, rules, regulations, there's yours and mine here in this third dimension. Everything is seen through the lens of judgment, right or wrong, or I want it or I don't want it, right? And with this, you're constantly kind of in a state of reaction, right? I, I can't help how it is. I'm just reacting in my life. And I'm either the hero or the victim. Wanting or feeling like I'm not getting what I want. My attention is on the past or on the future. And in this dimension, everything is done through a force of will. There's... Uh, institutions that really thrive in this environment, churches, uh, you know, uh, religions, um, military, judicial systems, school systems, they're all based upon, you know, this system of rules, laws, and regulations. So there is a jump up from that. And that jump up from that is the fourth dimension. In the fourth dimension, what happens is you begin to let go of the things that held you down before. One of the big things is forgiveness, letting go of the other person and their wrongs towards you and letting go of judgments and assumptions. You're like, mm, I'm a, I assume, how many times have you done this? You assume that, you know, the person's bad or wrong or whatever. And then what happens is, is you learn something and you're like, oh my God, they didn't intend that. You know, guess what? When you die and you get what they call a life review, and this life review is where you... Uh, encounter uh, the exact experiences you had, but you become the other person. When this happens, 
you get to actually experience, oh my God, they didn't even mean that. Oh my God, their intention wasn't evil. They had this other thing going on. When people come back from a near-death experience, if they've gone far enough through their life review, they all come back with that same comment. It wasn't what I thought. My life, my life wasn't what I thought. Holy cow. Imagine that. Hey, psh, guess what? My life is not what I thought. And yours isn't either. This is kind of big, right? When you start to realize that, you can start making a decision. You know what? I'm going to let go a bit here. I'm just going to, I'm going to start letting go of assuming that that person's wrong, assuming that they had bad intentions, assuming that they meant to hurt me, assuming that they meant to disrespect me, all of those things. As I say, you know, uh, when somebody, you know, cuts me off or something, you know, like that, and, you know, you might think, oh my God, that person is, is, you know, such a blah, 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 you know, but consider they may have irritable bowel syndrome. I mean, I mean, for many years I had that and my God, my, my maneuvers on the freeway, you know, at the last minute trying to make an exit or something, not good, not good. Anyway, hey, by the way, whoever you are out there, I'm sorry, but you know, you just don't know what somebody's going through. You have no idea. Yeah, so it really is an interesting concept. And I just want to interject here that, you know, I think what you're saying is that with the third dimension, the fourth dimension, and we may talk about the fifth as well later on, uh, because the jump that you're suggesting from everybody on the planet is out to get me, uh, possibly, or this person did that and that person did this too really understanding what the core of them is and, and their, who their being is really is a jump into the fifth dimension. But I wanna share with everybody that there is a possibility of jumping from wherever you are into that space. It happens. Now it might be a little bit rare and there may be you know, a few things that you wanna clear out to get there. But I wanna share something uh, personal that happened to me. It, as you were talking about this, I, I recalled, um, when I was first starting to actively seek uh, a change in my own life, that was one of my big questions uh, due to religious background. Like, how is it fair that a person could come on the planet and uh, have some horrifying experience, be victimized as a brand new infant? Not long before that, I'd heard a story about an infant who had been terribly abused at two weeks old. And I thought, how can anything in that person's life be expected to go well after something like that? And they had no choice, zero choice in the matter, right? Or what if you are murdered, you know, at two years old? Like how is anything in this life fair based on the model that you would live here uh, be judged throughout your whole life and then die and be judged on all that stuff that you experienced. Saying that someone in, in, in interfered in your life in a way that was negative. So I was seeking, and I kind of put the question out to nobody in particular, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, is this, is this right? Right after that, someone introduced me to the book uh, by Michael Newton called Journey of Souls. Many of you are familiar with it. And it was the right thing at the right time for me. And it really introduced me to this idea that you come with a soul group. You have a soul group when you're not here. You know, that near-death experience, I think this is what people are experiencing. You actually see what people are on the other side. And, and here was the suggestion that the person that you trust and love the most on the other side in your soul group may be the one that actually is your biggest abuser, the person that hurts you, maybe even the person that murders you. And that concept for me released me. It allowed me to, the inkling of the idea that everyone around us really actually is 
here in our very best interest, even though it may not seem like that, because I mean, I'd love to use a swear word, but Johan said we can't, <laughs> you know, they really are that a word, right? They hurt us. They do bad things. And yet they're that, that person that actually loves us the most on the other side. So it opens a space for that possibility. But I know where we're going with this conversation. And I think it's really the beginning of opening um, the conversation for us to love ourselves as well. So we're right up against our break. We need to hear from the UK Health Radio. So UK Health Radio, take it away. So we're talking about this concept um, that somewhere out there in the ethers, there's this whole loving being that we love and that loves us and is really here for our best interest. But in this plane, Bill, in this third dimension, man, are they a beep? Oh my God. <laughs> and they well, hurt I... us and they and they, you know, ruined our lives. And then there's a possibility of us popping back out of that and understanding that they're actually pure love and so are we. Oh my God. Liz, you know what? As you're talking, you were talking and you gave me a tremendous gift today. And it's something I hadn't thought of. But when you said that, that, you know, on the other side, you know, that they were a very loved and trusted person, and then they were here, you know, to be, to uh, do whatever they're going to do so that we could grow in some way. And what I, I got to tell you about this experience, a little story for everybody. Well, when I, uh, years ago, I was, um, I had a business relationship. I had invested in a, uh, in a company and there was a person who uh, was uh, in a power position within that company. And I, I was like, oh my God, the guy's mentally ill and it's, and it's, you know, my investment's gonna just go downhill and get crushed. And it did. But that, that years, years later, year, years later, that's exactly what happened. But, but I was in the very early stages. I had just put a tremendous amount of money in and I went to lunch with him and I was like, man, this, this dude ain't right. You know, he's, he's not right. And, it's, and, and I don't like him. You know, I don't, I mean, I'm I, now I'm all the way in. What do I do? You know, I'm, I've, I sunk my money and, and now, you know, I'm stuck, you know, so try to make this work. So I don't really even like this guy. I sit down. He's already waiting for me at breakfast. I walk in, I sit down across from him and, and I was like, um, you know, Hey, you know, how you doing? How you doing? You know? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I have never before in my life had this happen. My heart opened up. And I mean, like, I have never felt this amount of love for man, woman, dog, child, anything. It was the most immense love that I had ever felt. And I'm choking, I'm literally choking and welling up with tears with this, this love for this man that I, that I like, what the, and it's really confusing because you're like, oh my God, this guy's kind of an ass, but I love him so much, you know, and, and I was like, literally like, oh, couldn't hardly get the words out. And I was like, tell me about what's going on in the company. I'm looking outside and I'm trying to, I, you know, oh, 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 breathing, you know, trying to make it, make it go down, you know, because it was so overwhelming. It opened up and my whole chest opened up and I was like, wow, holy cow, what the heck is that? My point of telling the story is that he was a trusted, loved person on the other side and he came here to show me something you know hey you know you which he did actually end up being the catalyst in my life to have new realizations and i i would have never gotten there in this lifetime without him 
uh, those realizations. So I always remembered, you know, in the hard times, actually, you know, there were times the hard times got so hard that you'd forget. You were like, oh my God, he's distasteful to be around, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but, but I would constantly, you know, I, you know, in my quiet time, I'd say, Bill, remember, remember, this is not the first time around the block with this one. There's something going on here. And so I did learn wonderful lessons uh, from that. A great master had come and wearing a horrific disguise. Yeah, right. Well, it's one of those things. There's this uh, topic I and mean, things that, that we talk about all the time that maybe other people don't because we are a couple of weirdos. But this idea that, you know, um, are you willing to be happy and willing enough that you would be willing to let go of your biggest resentment? Biggest resentment. I mean, the person that really, they did it to you. They, they're the reason that your life is crap today. And if you knew the reward was this overwhelming sense of love, the ability to understand that they probably are your biggest teacher, would you do it? So I have to say, I hated this idea. Hated it, hated it, hated it <laughs> with every fiber of my being, right? This idea that something terrible, you, you got to put a silver lining around something awful that happened in your life. I really hated that idea, just did not think that was a good thing. In fact, there's a third book in this trilogy of Michael Newton's Journey of Souls, Destiny Souls, and the third one I blocked out. I got to the middle of it and I could not finish <laughs> because there was a story about someone that had to actually complete the lesson. They had to go through the crap they were in to get to the other side. And at the time, I didn't realize that that was what was happening in my life too. I'd gone through something horrific and the consequences of it were still happening. And I was looking for the rescue balloon to show up, you know, the white knight to come and, and just wave, wave the magic wand and wash it all away. I really did. I mean, I, that's what I thought was going to happen when I was reading this book and the guy in the book goes before a council. He's a man who has, if I remember correctly, he's a disabled man, mentally handicapped a little bit, slow, if you will, had been accused of raping someone. He didn't do it. And he went into regression and went before his council. And the council said, yeah, you're going to have to experience this is what you came for. This mm. is what you came to do. Well, he eventually ended up writing books about it and, and it ended up changing other people's lives too. And that was the lesson. But at the time I was so angry that here in this fifth dimension idea, this guy was still going to have to go through it, which meant I was going to have to, right? I was so unwilling to let go and accept that idea that I never did finish the book. I'll have to go back. But I did understand it was the beginning of that concept of understanding that our, we come to experience something, we come to do something. And there is a place where you can transcend the veils getting so thin, right? And actually see the truth behind it. In my own case, the experience I went through was chewing me up and spitting me out because re I refused to be on purpose. I refuse to live the life I'm, I'm living today, by the way. I kept uh, going around it. And the signposts got stronger and stronger and stronger until they were a punch right in the face. And then I recognized the signpost. And now I recognize the people who set up that roadblock for me to force me to go the direction because it's important. The work we're doing is very, very important. I needed to get here. And so I would hope that people could hear what we're talking about and make that leap faster than I did because I am hard-headed a lot of the times. And the day, I remember the day when I stopped contributing my energy to that issue and I started to see the whole being that the people were who were involved, especially one person in general. I started to see the what they came to do as well. And they came to help me and they came to do something for themselves as well. 
I was able to see clearly all the challenges that they were experiencing also that they were going through in their life. And like you, my heart opened up and I was really able to feel love once again, but not just for them, for, but for me, it freed me in a way that nothing else did. I was willing to put down my weapons, let go of that resentment for, for what was happening in this life, see the kind of play that it was, accept the gifts that were in it. Like I took the punch in the face, <laughs> understood that it was my sign to pivot, turn and accept my mission. Right. And so I think, you know, that with this conversation, that's what is possible, right? Bill, isn't that what you've experienced that people that are able to take that jump, take that leap, and see through the veil, see what we really are, the loving uh, souls, the, this light energy that's here just having an experience, experiencing itself and expanding, that that leap is possible from anywhere, anywhere that you are, but more likely when you're up there moving into the fifth dimension, moving into the fourth dimension, when you've released some of these resentments already. And, you know, that's what our system does so well is help clear that out. Well, I think, I think uh, for everybody listening here on UK Health Radio, there is a, an aspect of this that um, you'll want to do selfishly, right? And that is that your health is relative to your emotional state. So if you are resenting or, you know, yourself, others, blame, so on and so forth, we know that this will retard the energy in your body. It will also throw it off balance. When I say, I mean actual electrical charge in the body, your body is a battery and um, we can measure the voltage that is in every single organ in your body. And with this information, you know, you can predict what's going to happen. There is a correlation in between low voltage which is, you know, when you when you retard the energy through negative thoughts and feelings, and then when it's released, uh, it'll jump by like fifty percent, up to fifty percent, and become balanced as well. So, so there is a, a very much a quality of life benefit physically and emotionally to making the jump from this world is inherently a hostile place that's against me to this lifetime is actually supporting me, that all of life is here supporting me. Kind of like, you know, when I had, and I sat across from that guy at the restaurant, is the viewpoint prior to was here is a hostel that is not in my best interest to, you know, a window into, Hey, psh, there's something else going on here. There's something greater that's happening for you. It's happening for you, not against me. So, so Einstein had actually uh, said this long ago amazing you know is the is the universe uh you know a supportive you know or uh or against me right is, is it a hostile place or is a or is it actually supporting me if you if you take the viewpoint and we'll take this 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 uh in the next segment here after the after this commercial break we'll we'll take a look at that and we're going to actually do a technique which is going to help you to uh, try to dabble in that. You know, it's an experiment. You put your toe in the water, you know, is it warm? Do I like it? Maybe you put the foot in, maybe you jump right in. But a little technique that's going to help you to start to experience the support of the universe. 
We're ready for our next break here with UK Health Radio. Take it away. So we're, we're back, you know, we're talking about this idea of really understanding the nature of the universe. I mean, this is a big conversation. And I know um, where Bill wanted to go with was a, an idea that uh, a person could get to that everybody loves me. And we were talking about this before, we'll, we'll get to that. And I brought up the idea like, well, Bill, what if um, people say, well, if, ever, if I think everybody loves me, and now we kind of have set it up, we're, we're understanding that we're talking about the core being of people, not their ego or personality on this planet, but the core being something that we can recognize and see. But if I believe that everybody loves me, am I a narcissist? Is that what narcissists do? And if not, what's the difference? Gosh, you know, um, here's a, a couple of things from my run-ins with narcissists is that um, there's an essence of people who truly love themselves and by extension, they love others. There is a peace when you get around them. There's a feeling of peace. And there's a feeling of being accepted as is, how is, where is. Now, um, narcissists, you know, my experience is that they are self-obsessed, not self-loving. What do I mean by self-loving? Well, if you, the best way I can describe this um, is that if you were to think of someone you love non-romantically, you know, like a pet, a cat, dog, uh, sometimes a niece and nephew, grandma, grandpa, some, somebody, usually people get a couple examples in a lifetime, maybe just one example in a lifetime. You know, some people are really lucky that way that, um, that they get to experience it. But you probably have the gift of an animal or a person at some point that you felt accepted and understood, completely accepted and completely understood. And even if there was any degree of not understanding, it was acceptance, right? I don't understand it, but you know what? I accept you anyway, you know, and I got a good feeling because I think you're all right. Well, that feeling having that really good feeling, you know how that feels? That same identical feeling as a feeling for you. That's what we're talking about with self-love. It's a good feeling. It's, a, it's different than, what about my soup? You know, it's kind of hot. I asked for the burger without cheese and you brought cheese. You know, look how you're treating me. You know, uh, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. I need, I need a full 12 ounces, you know, whatever it might be. You're, you need. Yeah. So we're really, really talking about the a behavioral difference. That's very obvious. I think people who are truly narcissistic, and we're talking about a personality disorder. I think the word narcissism is thrown around a lot for people who have, uh, you know, maybe what's called a lot of ego or vibrato or people who tend to be a little bit selfish in nature, which a lot of us don't like, you know, if people are selfish, I'm talking about that personality disorder that's destructive, where it's everything is about me. And when we're talking about everybody loves me, and I have the capacity, conversely, to love everyone else. It is different. You're talking about a state of peacefulness, where you're seeing beyond the veil, you're seeing beyond these flesh suits that we're in and all the things that happen to them to the true intention behind everyone, the reason we all came. And we're talking about the reason that we all came is to expand the universe, to make some things change. If we understand that our, what is our role on the planet? So let's say maybe you're a mom, you're a stay at home mom. And you say, you know what? I am so stuck here. I, there's nothing I can do. I'm, I can't influence the world because I'm stuck, you know, nursing a baby and changing diapers. And man, those kids are disagreeable, right? 
if you're able to shift into this idea, uh, concept and feeling, the biggest thing is a feeling, you would understand that those little beings on the planet, you are there supporting, molding, and shaping what could eventually be the new leader of the universe. And if that being has a core foundation of love and acceptance and brilliance, if those are the things that knowledge, not just education, but real knowledge and understanding are foundational principles in their lives, that you now have the capacity to change everything. So each one of us has that from wherever we are on the planet, we have the capacity to change everything. Now, we may not be able to see it in the moment, but it's true. So I think that's what we're talking about in in terms of self-love, self-respect, understanding that you really have come to play your role to uh, expand the universe in whatever tiny way that you can. Maybe it's you're an artist and you paint the painting that inspires the next Leonardo da Vinci or inspires um, a president to change his mind. Um, Alan Watts tells a story in an, an old book about actually doing that in art school, painting a painting that changed the role of, of a government, a government official who's actually a prince, saw this painting, loved it so much that he created a whole art program within his country to support and foster artists. And he was just an art student. So each of us has that kind of impact. If we loved ourselves enough to understand that, what else could we create? It's a big question. That is a big question. This concept of, of everybody loves me. You know, from an early age, uh, most of us have found ourselves disciplined and um, judged over and over your school teachers, your peers, your parents, judging and disciplining. So, so from an early age, most of us feel like we're not loved. There's very few people who do love. We experience very rare cases of being understood and accepted. But those few cases within it hold the seeds to a vastly different life. If you were to think about it, right? The notice how you felt and how you acted after or when you were in the presence of somebody that loved and accepted you, grandma or niece or nephew or whatever, you were like, man, life's okay. I can relax. I can finally, I'm okay. I can relax. I can say what I want. I can do what I want. Life's okay. I have permission. Well, guess what? This is available to you today. And the people that are around you will be affected. The encouragement here is to look beyond the veil of the personality to that true love that we talked about that was in that original feeling meditation. So Liz, if it's okay with you, I'd like to walk into that. Before, before I do, did you have something to, your thoughts around all that? Oh, no, I think it'd be great for people to get a chance to have a taste of experiencing this so that they know it's a possibility. So we've just got about six minutes left. So let's uh, let's do that for the rest of the show. Okay, fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is start you off with, now, you don't want to do this if you're driving, you know, you're going to go back and listen to the recording of this. If you're operating heavy machinery, whatever, this is a, this is a couch. This is a couch exercise. Okay. So here we go. The very first thing is, is that um, I'm going to have to show you the eye exercise that goes along with this from Cogno Movement. Now it is what we call the infinity. An infinity is a figure eight that's on its side. What you're going to do is you keep your head straight and level and 
you uh, look down at the floor to the right, you look over at, at the right wall and then move your eyes up the right wall across the ceiling. When you get to the midway point, you go down to the floor again and then look at the floor on the left side and up the left wall to the ceiling. So it's like a big figure eight on its side. You're moving your eyes in this infinity the entire time. There is a neurological reason for this. It's going to activate all the different types of your brain and it's going to synchronize the left and right hemisphere as we do this exercise. So begin, you can do this eyes closed or eyes open. Begin to move your eyes in, in, in this infinity or figure eight on its, on its side. And recall, recall the times that you were actually understood and completely accepted. This may have been accompanied with a feeling of being loved. This understanding and acceptance are derivatives of love. So odds are you got to feel a sense of love. This could have been from an animal. It could have been from someone out there that you had an experience with. It's typically non-romantic love because oftentimes romantic love comes with conditions. And we're talking about something that has no condition. They just love you for no good reason. It's unattached to an outcome. So as you're rolling your eyes here in the infinity, noticing that person and how you felt in their presence. Notice how you felt. Notice how good it felt. Notice where do I feel that in my physical body? Where is that good sensation in my body? Maybe it's in the chest. Maybe it's in the belly button. Where do you feel? Maybe it's all over. Where do you feel it? Noticing how good that feels. And now, with this great feeling, realize that everybody actually felt this way about me. Every person that I've ever encountered felt this way about me before we got to the planet Earth. They all felt this way. They all felt this way. And I'm going to allow myself to look past the personality. Looking past the personality and just knowing, acknowledging Oh, they feel this way about me. They really loved, accepted, and understood me. Notice how it feels. Notice all the people in your life, your relatives, your neighbors, school, home, everywhere. They all love me. They all love me. And open yourself up to receiving this love. For most of us, you probably have pushed it away all your life. No, 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 not too close. Don't get too close. Don't push them away. Let go of that. No more pushing it away. I'm going to allow you to love me. I'm going to allow your love in. Not a word needs to be said to anybody about this. Just allow their love in for you. As you go about your day, simply allow 
everyone's love in for you. You may find yourself in place with a bunch of strangers. And if you simply allow their love in, you'll be amazed at how they treat you. Things will shift. What, what would be considered miracles will occur because they will all begin to feel differently about you. They'll begin to be small things at first. An extra bag at the grocery store they didn't charge you for. They'll, they'll look you in the eye. They'll be of extra service. They're going to pull you out of line and, and say, hey, let me help you over here. I got to open, open cash register over here. S things will begin to happen to you. And they'll be small at first. And then they'll get bigger and bigger. People will begin to let you in, you know, in traffic. Like, oh, hold on. No, go ahead of me. You got it. All kinds of little things will happen. Simply begin. Begin the process. Allowing everybody to love you. No longer pushing it away. Feel it and allow it. And we want to hear from you after this. We want to hear about all those great little things that happen. You know, this is really the core of what Bill and I teach every day. When you can change the way you feel in your physical body, you can change everything. All right, you guys, we're running over time here. We'll see you all again next week. Reach out to us. Let us know how this goes. Thanks so much, Bill McKenna. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here with us on the New Life Perspective radio show. For more information or to find out more about the work that Bill and I do, please visit us at cognomovement.com or email us at info at cognomovement.com. See you again soon.